at the onset, I would like to uh, thank you, uh, both A4SICC and uh, Rockman Business School for giving us this opportunity to present before you today our solution. Um, we are team forward. Uh, we are Roger Wang, Peter Pansevich, and myself, Venkat Ayer. Uh, just to give a brief introduction about ourselves, uh, Roger Wang uh, is someone with six years of experience in technology. Um, Peter Pansevich has worked uh, close to about 12 years in the field of finance and especially wealth management, and is also a CFA charter holder. And myself, Venkat Ayer, um, I have six years of experience uh, in marketing and brand management. And together, today, uh, we are here to present before you our ideas with regards to increasing retail investment in the sustainable finance space. To begin with, uh, we have our uh, team member, Roger Wang, uh, to start off with the proceedings. First off, thank you to all the judges for taking the time to listen to our pitch. Our belief is that in order to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals, sustainable finance must become simply finance. This means that our customers need not choose between competitive returns and investing in ethical companies. Both needs can be met when investors have access to the proper information. Starting with a first glance at the platform, there are three key differentiators that will make us a strong competitor in the existing marketplace. Number one, tailored investment recommendations. At the core of our platform is an algorithm that recommends investments based on a simple set of questions answered by the investor. This set of questions not only assesses the risk tolerance of the investor, but also the social and environmental causes they value. Based on this data, the algorithm will recommend a portfolio that is not only ethical, but tackles the specific issues that the investor cares about. Number two, a reliable uh, process that reinforces trust. While many existing investing platforms provide options for ethical investing, they do not actually provide details regarding the companies within a fund or the types of projects that these companies are working on. Through our platform, investors will have easy access to details on whichever stock or fund they are interested in, providing full transparency in exactly what issues they are invested in. Number three, community building. We know that many ESG investors have similar values and therefore share their investing strategies or favorite stocks on online blogs or discussion boards. To build a sustainable advantage over other investing platforms, we felt that being able to bring that community onto the platform was key. On the forward platform, users will be able to create communities, discussion boards, and posts about their own experiences while learning from the experiences of other users. Before diving into each of these features, we wanted to first touch on the current landscape to illustrate why our platform can carve out a unique space. Currently, there are many different types of investing channels, but they tend to suffer from one or more of these issues. There is a lack of transparency and access to information. Advisors have a belief that being, being socially or environmentally responsible equates to lower returns. And there is no centralized marketplace for ESG specific investments. Now let's have a look at three of the key competitors out there on the market. Direct investing platforms like RBC provide lots of options, but little information on what each stock or fund is comprised of. For any investor looking for more transparency into these funds or stocks, they need to go hunt for that information through third-party sources. Robo-advisors like Wealthsimple provide an ethical option for investors, but this is an option that investors have to opt in for, meaning that the basic funds still invest in big polluters. Even when investors choose to make their investments ethical, there is little choice in terms of what social or environmental issues they want to focus on. Lastly, we all know the issues investors have with mutual funds, including high management fees and the over-reliance on the expertise of fund managers. Next, we'll have a look at how our competitors match up to our customers. We know that boomers and Gen X tend to be more comfortable with traditional investment routes like mutual funds and stocks, while millennials and Gen Z are embracing disruptors like robo-advisors. However, a sentiment analysis found that while companies like Wealthsimple have taken a significant share of the market for young investors, they do not enjoy the same level of trust as large banks like RBC. 
Through this analysis, we believe that there is a large white space for an investing platform that is both innovative and trustworthy for the younger generation. Thank you, Rajiv. To take this forward, I would like to <clears throat> delve deep into the business model here. Uh, talking about the product first, Forward is a product in three phases. The phase one is the consumer facing app. Uh, in this particular phase, Forward would be almost be a robo advisor, but in the sustainable finance space. We would launch as a platform that invests money from retail investors like you and me um, into ETFs with a focus on ESG. In the second phase, we would move, move into the enterprise segments, launching Forward for Advisors. Forward for Advisors would be a product that helps traditional wealth advisors integrate ESG into their portfolios. Here is where we would have expert advisory and analytics built into the platform. Finally, we would slowly delve into active investing uh, as part of our long-term strategy uh, to build our own fund with a focus on ESG and impact with our proprietary, uh, proprietary investment methodologies. Hence, Forward would start with the technology, build in processes as we achieve scale, and then specialize. This is our long-term vision to achieve success in the sustainable finance space. Um, we would like to speak about the customer in later parts of this presentation, uh, but starting with how do we reach them? There are three major ways we look at uh, reaching our customer. The first one is a percentage of transactions model, this we believe would be a convenient way for the customer to make sure that uh, uh, his or her account is constantly refilled. Uh, the second aspect we would look at is loyalty points. And uh, this was very interesting, uh, especially when we had a conversation with people from uh, Loyalty One, because they are now looking uh, to also uh, involve charity organizations uh, for people to use their loyalty points for uh, the greater good. Incorporating sustainable finance here would be an opportunity that we would want to uh, take ahead. Finally, partnership with banks. Uh, this is the more traditional model, uh, but what we would like to do is make this process more seamless so that people can conveniently transfer money from their bank accounts direct, directly to the forward accounts. As part of the promotion strategy, our focus would be to build a loyal and a growing user base. And we would like to do this by building a community. Uh, we would like to build an online community. We would want the investors coming together like a Reddit, in a Reddit-like platforms. Uh, local crowdfunding opportunities, etc. This would be a great way to engage more people and uh, make them use our platform uh, constantly. The second step of promotions would be partnership with academicians. A lot of projects are occurring in the sustainable finance space and uh, this would also raise credibility and trust for us in the long run. Finally, the uh, more traditional ways of uh, promotion would also be used, loyalty points and referral bonus for uh, engaging and onboarding more users onto our platform. Uh, we spoke about partnerships before, but I believe that a partnership with BlackRock iShare would definitely be crucial here, uh, majorly because uh, in alignment with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, as you can see here, they have a very detailed reporting structure, and also they have a huge asset base with high liquidity. Forward for advisors would be, our, uh, uh, would be a product that we would launch three to four years down the line. And this would be an enterprise product that would help integrate ESG into traditional wealth management portfolios. The tools that we would use here uh, would be both internal and external. At the same time, we would also have a sustainability council, which would almost act like a filter for the right investments to be done. So that every voice is incorporated into deciding which investment should be done and which investment is not. Um, we, now it is very important to see how would forward for advisors incorporate ESG into traditional portfolios? There are two ways of looking at this. Uh, usually what is used by fixed income managers is called financialization. Uh, where what they do here is uh, they incorporate ESG metrics into financial models to come up with a final number. What we believe is a more effective way uh, and also what research suggests is juxtaposition of ESG data. And by juxtaposition, we mean uh, looking at uh, ESG metrics separately, financial metrics separately, and then visually juxtaposing both on top of each other, as we would show in the next slide. As you can see here, with an example of a coal company, an excellent financial performer, but with a poor SRI profile because of various reasons. And this is the power of this particular approach. Um, and we believe that a thematic approach to investing would give us a good guide as to how to go ahead with this particular um, integration.
I would now like to request my colleague Peter to take this ahead, speak more about the customer and also about the financials. Yes, thank you, Venka. Uh, moving on to our next slide, we'll be discussing our target market, which is the millennials. Uh, the reason why we chose the millennials is because of what's going to be happening in the next 10 years, which is the, an intergenerational wealth transfer of $750 billion moving from our grandparents to our parents and then tripling down to the millennials. 95% of millennials are very interested in sustainable finance and 88% of millennials that are in the high net worth segment will do their own research and determine uh, if companies uh, share the same values as they do. So they'll look at their ESG factors before investing into them. And a key component, 89% per, uh, are ex expect their financial provider to give them or to research uh, deeply into ESG companies before providing any recommendations on stocks, bonds, or ETFs to them. Uh, moving forward, uh, in terms of estimating demand, I'm just going to share my power, uh, sorry, my Excel with you. To estimating demand, we figured out what the population of millennials is in Canada, which is 7.9 million. Uh, we intend to capture 1% of the market, uh, which will be 79,000 millennials. Now, the average salary for a millennial in Canada is about $45,000, and the rule of thumb yeah, for invest, for saving in general is about 10% of your your annual, annual earnings, which equates to about $4,500. So each millennial about have about 4,500 investable assets, which will give us a total uh, market of $355 million, uh, sorry, $35 billion market cap, and $355 million is what we'll be targeting in terms of a 1% capture. And year five, we expect to grow to at least 112 million assets under management, which with the hope of having 22,000 uh, clientele. Our fee structure, we have two lines of business, one that deals directly with the investment advisor and second that deals with the retail uh, investor. With the investment advisor, we use our platform to complement their, uh, their portfolios by adding ESG to an already existing portfolio. Uh, and for using this service, we charge about $1 per month per client and they will have access to our research reports our investment council, and as well as our analysts. And the clientele has access to these sources as well. When it comes to the retail investor side, we charge a 1% uh, eight, uh, assets under management fee. Uh, this is to rebalance the portfolio and, uh, and for dividend reinvestments as well. Now, when it comes to our projections, we have a five-year projection model here. As you can see, we're heavily focused on building our, our, our application and as well as uh, having a strong sales force and strong advertisement. As you can see, these are the two significant costs uh, for the next five years going forward, with year one and two having heavy losses and then expected to be profitable from year three and onwards. As I mentioned, year five is a crucial year for us. Uh, and this is where we expect most of our growth and be able to build our sustainable fund from there. Uh, now looking at the adopter chart here, you, so we're trying to capture 3% of the population each year with 30% uh, trying to spread the word of mouth. And this is how we expect to grow and have people uh, join our platform going forward. Uh, in terms of performance of a sample portfolio, so your typical uh, millennial will probably invest in ETFs. We picked the random one, XBAL, which is a balanced portfolio, invest 50% in stocks, 50% in bonds. You can see the rate of return, standard deviation, and, and sharp ratio here. By integrating 15% of an ESG fund into a portfolio, uh, you can see the returns have increased by 0.5, standard deviation has decreased, and you can see this, the sharp ratio has increased significantly. So on a risk-adjusted return basis, uh, adding ESG funds to your portfolio adds tremendous value, and it eliminates that stigma that they're high risk and they don't, prov they don't provide adequate returns. Now, when it comes to risks, we identify four key risks here. Uh, we'll highlight two important ones, imitability and greenwashing. With imitability, we assume we can think of a big bank that, have, you know, that has significant resources. They'll be able to replicate our model. However, we've had processes built in that will increase these barriers to entries. Um, these processes are our preparatory internal analysis will enrich our data quality and differentiate us from the competition. We will leverage our first mover advantage uh, through our partnership with uh, iShares. The network effect of onboarding stakeholders across both sides of the platform will increase the stickiness of the participants. 
when it comes to greenwashing, it is a sustainable finance issue. Uh, we will mitigate this through transparency, detail reporting, and as well as having a sustainable council. Now, when it comes to regulatory risks, uh, we can mitigate this uh, simply by joining uh, IROC membership, uh, becoming a dealer, and applying for CPIF insurance. And technology and privacy risk, we mitigate this by, like as, as I mentioned, from year one, we'll be invest heavily into our technology, into our into secure servers, uh, into building internal processes. And with this, I pass it on to uh, Banquet. Thank you, Peter, for explaining in detail. I would like to complete this presentation by talking about our implementation strategy. The first couple of aspects revolve around building a community, building a loyal user base, and also building partnerships that are extremely strategic for us, starting with academic partnerships and working with local projects, crowdfunding to make sure that we have a loyal user base hooked onto a platform, and then building trust and using that and leveraging that trust to build partnerships with uh, uh, ETFs as mentioned before, and also retail partnerships, say with uh, an Air Miles or a Starbucks. The next phase, uh, phase three and four, would be to launch both the customer facing app and then finally, in year three, when we have onboarded sufficient users, build the enterprise facing app. And this would be extremely critical for us to achieve scale and also create a visible impact in the sustainable finance space. Our long term strategy would be fourfold. Uh, we would, as mentioned before, we would uh, love to start the forward ESG fund. Uh, this would also have a focus on impact, give us more control, and we would ensure that we use the money from our investors in a more active way. Uh, we would also invest heavily in AI and we would continuously do so. At the same time, also look at project financing, especially in uh, local communities. Uh, finally, there is also an opportunity to have an ICO or an initial coin offering for um, a virtual currency that we might develop um, based on the loyalty points that we might be using, uh, something like an impact coin. And this is definitely an opportunity view that we would like to explore in the long term. I would like to complete this presentation by thanking you for this opportunity and restating our goal. That is to efficiently, reliably, and seamlessly connect businesses in genuine need of resources to individuals who desire both financial and social returns. Thank you.